Hi friends, we have understood about Maslow's theory of self-actualization and how we go on satisfying our needs from lower order needs to higher order needs. Now we should discuss what implications these have for a teacher to teach in the classroom. Why the knowledge of Maslow's theory is necessary for a teacher to see that the children are kept motivated and focused on achieving the learning goals and not thinking about other needs. Friends, we have understood the Maslow's theory of self-actualization. We all know that we satisfy our needs in a particular order. Why a teacher should have the knowledge of this theory? What implications does it have in a classroom for the learner? How can a teacher motivate each and every child after knowing where exactly the child is in Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Let us know more about it in this session. In this session, we will get to know the educational implications of Maslow's theory of self-actualization. At the end of this module, you will be able to discuss the educational implications of Maslow's theory of self-actualization in the sense that what relevance it has for your classroom teaching. Now let us consider those children who come from poor families who do not have access to even the resources to satisfy their basic needs. Some might not have food at home. Some may not have the resources like bag, books, pen, pencil. How can we expect such children to focus on learning? First of all, the basic needs like food and water should be fulfilled. What can a teacher do in the classroom? The provision of midday meals to some extent satisfies some of these needs. But what about the toilet facilities as they say in the rural schools? Why girl children are not sent to the schools despite efforts by the teachers and NGOs? It is because there are no good toilet facilities. The basic needs are to be met with even in the school if the children are to come and then learn there. If you have seen the latest movie Toilet, you will realize how difficult it is to live without the satisfaction of basic needs. Therefore, it is the responsibility of not only the teacher but the government and NGOs to see that the children who come from various backgrounds are given the basic resources or it is to be seen that basic needs of those children are met with, then only we can expect them to focus on learning. This doesn't mean that all other children who come from higher state of the society, they have satisfied their basic needs. It may so happen a child might not have slept well the previous night. There might have been some commotion at home and might not, uh, the, this might not have led the child to have good sleep or the child might have come on an empty stomach. For a teacher just to be very rude and punish the child just because he or she has not done the homework is not correct. It is necessary for the teacher to first understand the child and the child's needs before motivating the child to study. Many students come to the schools from slums, minority groups, from some groups where they are not so valued and when they come to the school and mingle with other children, they feel sort of excluded, feel isolated and that will disturb their minds and that will not allow them to focus on educational objectives. Therefore, it is very necessary for the teachers to make them feel secure both socially and emotionally in the classroom. How can the teacher do that? Let 
the teacher provide a very warm and friendly environment where every child is accepted with, uh, with all the strengths and weaknesses as he or she is. This will make them feel emotionally secure. They feel that they are accepted in the classroom as they are. And then comes the provision of social security. In a class, after the class session is over, the children mingle outside in the playground, they talk in the corridor and it is the responsibility of the teacher to see that all children are treated equal even by the students. Therefore, she has to model the behavior and then by her actions and words, she should show that all children are equal and she should talk to every child with the same respect and that will give the message to the students and they will emulate accordingly. So, this is the responsibility of the teacher to make the classroom environment a very conducive one for learning. It is the responsibility of the teacher to motivate each and every child realize his or her fullest potential. Children are sent to the schools to study, to achieve academically. And it is the responsibility of the teacher to see that she motivates each child to excel academically. How can we do that? In the society, if we pay importance to academics, children will also pay importance to academics. If the society values learning, then children also will do that. But we see that in the society, they have different models. They can see different people giving priority to different things and we have the TV and other things which will tempt children to go for a fast buck. But then what can teachers do in the schools to develop in children the achievement motivation? We can do a lot. Children can be told the stories of great achievers, men, women in various fields, not only in academics but also in sports, learning, the Nobel laureates, the stories of discoverers and inventors and also there should be competitions which will honor those students who are good at uh, different skills and academics and there should be a nurturing environment where the teacher will always evaluate the progress of the children and guide them to move step by step further. It is very important for the teacher to be a model if the children have to emulate. So, the teacher should always praise those children who are good at things, provide an environment where they can demonstrate their excellence in different activities, reward them and also with the help of the parents give a very nurturing and encouraging environment where success, academics and achievement is valued. In this way we can motivate children to achieve excellence in academics too and also in other areas in which they are good at. Now the teacher will also have to motivate children to excel and realize their fullest potential. All children may not necessarily be good at a particular thing but everyone is good at something. It is the responsibility of the teacher to realize the talent which each child has, nurture that ch talent and give opportunities for the child to develop one's skills, knowledge in that particular field and excel in that field. How can the teacher do that? It is not necessary that every child will be good at verbal exposition, good at writing or good at knowledge only. Some children may be good at sports, some good at drawing, some good at painting, some good at dancing and singing. How can the teacher motivate each and every child to excel and realize one's fullest potential? This can be done through co-curricular activities, competitions, talents of the children can be explored and after identifying what every child is good at, it is the responsibility of the teacher to provide conducive environment for the child 
to get training in that particular skill or in that particular area and then realize his or her fullest potential. It may so happen that the resources for giving such training may not be available in the school. But then the teacher can always refer the child to the concerned department or the organization. There are many NGOs and even government organizations which do that work or even entrust this responsibility to the parents or the counselors. So students, teachers have a very important role to play in motivating children to realize their fullest potential. We have to see that their physical needs are met with. Wherever they are not satisfied, we can provide whatever they lack to the extent possible with the help of organizations and also with the help of government. Once their physical needs are met with, they have to feel emotionally and socially secure. Children coming from various environments, from minority groups, from backward classes, from the slums, may have different environments. But what the teacher can do in the classroom is to provide a very warm and friendly environment, a caring environment where every child is accepted with all his or her strengths and weaknesses. And from there, the child is nurtured to excel in whatever they are good at. This conducive environment plus a push to excel in whatever they are good at by developing in them achievement motivation will definitely make them realize whatever potentials they have in whichever field. Thank you.